What's cracking, everybody? Let's talk about some next-gen stats, and specifically, let's talk about wide receivers who excelled on deep shots last year. How do I come up with these scores? They're only being graded on targets of 20 or more air yards downfield. All right, what does that mean, right? Like if you're standing at the 50 yard line and you throw it to the end zone, it's 50 air yards, right? Because you're going from the 50 all the way down to the goal line. That's different than let's say the guys at the 50 yard line throws it to the 40 and the receiver goes 40 yards to the crib. So now they're both 50 yard receptions but one is 50 air yards, the other is 10 air yards. Are things that go into the score, right? We're talking about yards, receptions, also per game also matters in this metric as well. How about catch percentage? And then how about expected catch percentage? Next Gen Stats does this cool thing where they kind of ca calculate and tabulate, you know, what is the expected catch rate? Like if you catch a one yard dump off, that's pretty much an expected catch rate of like 97, 98%. If you're looking at a target 20 yards downfield, obviously the difficulty level goes way up. Your expected catch rate goes way down. League average on these passes of 20 plus air yards is around 36%. Other things that go into the score, how about double team percent? Tight window throw, so less than a yard of separation from a DB. Oh, by the way, separation also goes into this metric as well. I kind of sort of figure if you're getting a lot more separation on these deep passes, that's a good thing. There's a couple other things that go into it as well, but I'm not going to bog you down with the nitty gritty. That's the general idea of what goes into these scores. All right, let's start with number five, which is quite frankly, the most surprising Nelson freaking Aguilar graded out as my fifth best wide receiver on deep passes last year. 82.9 overall score on these deep passes. Let's talk about why. How about the fact that he caught half of his 20 targets downfield? Uh, a 50% catch rate when the league average is 36%. That is awesome efficiency. 415 receiving yards on these opportunities. That was actually the fifth most in the NFL. And how about this? Six of his eight touchdowns scored last year came on deep balls last year. That was the second most in the NFL, that's more than DK, that's more than Nuke, that's more than Devontae Adams, that's more than Mike Evans. And can we also talk about who is throwing him the damn ball? Does he have Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball? No. Does he have Deshaun Watson throwing the Aaron Rodgers? No, he's got Derek Carr. Nothing against Derek Carr, but he's just not in that tier, right? But now he's in New England with dead arm Cam Newton. Let's see how that turns out. All right, Woo! number four on this list. How about DK Metcalf? I know this one doesn't surprise you, but this man is an absolute freaking beast deep downfield. 480 receiving yards on these deep passes last year. That actually led the NFL. His four receiving touchdowns in this scenario, and he tied a lot of different people, but it was tied for the third most. Mm -hmm. By the way, this has nothing to do with next-gen stats, but the fact that eight wide receivers went ahead of DK Metcalf in that draft class, this is why the drunk guy at the bar thinks he can be a GM, because... So many teams absolutely galaxy brain this thing to think that eight wide receivers were somehow better than DK Metcalf. Hollywood Brown, no. smallish wide receiver coming off of a broken damn foot. I'm a Pac-12 guy, but Nikhil Harry, no. JJ Arcega, white no. side, like... What? I love the fact that Debo Samuel went ahead of DK Metcalf too, no. like... All of the reasons that you kind of sort of didn't like DK, the fact that he was very raw as a route runner, you could have said, you could say the exact same thing about Debo Samuel, and he went ahead of DK. AJ Brown went ahead of DK. Well, okay, I, actually, we don't have a problem with that. Miko Hardman. Oh. Jeez, can you imagine the Kansas City Chiefs right now? Patrick Mahomes tossing to Tyreek Hill and DK Metcalf and Travis Kelsey. Oh, God. Why Kansas City? What? Why me, Cole Hardman? Paris Campbell went ahead no. of DK. I gotta be honest with you. I kind of sort of thought that was a good pick. I like Paris Campbell a lot coming out of school. Andy Isabella, though. No. This one is no. just... No. This one is just... No. It's no. the worst. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's 5'9", 185. Great speed. He, he ran like a 4'3", right? But that's the exact same speed as DK Metcalf. And DK is 6'4", 230 pounds. And I know what Arizona's thinking. They're thinking, oh, we're going to draft the next Tyree Kill here. By the way, if you're going to gamble on an upside athlete that you think can absolutely burn, take DK 
DK Metcalf. All right, let's talk about number three on this list. How about Calvin Ridley? He caught 14 passes of 20 or more air yards downfield. That was actually the most in the NFL. He had 431 receiving yards on these kind of targets last year. That was actually the fourth most. He had 36 deep targets last year. That was the most in the NFL. More than Tyreek Hill and more than Chase Claypool, who both had the second most with 32 a pop. How about number two on this list? Brandon Cooks, 86.18 overall deep ball score. Why did he score so well? Well, he saw 22 targets and he caught 12 of them. His 55% catch rate, again, way above league average of around 36%, but actually 18% over expectation per next gen stats as well so again hyper efficient those 12 receptions that he had on deep passes last year again just as many as Tyreek Hill just as many as DK Metcalf but he did it on fewer targets and how about this the fact that he had the six most receiving yards on deep passes last year that's actually more than Justin Jefferson number one on this list how about Tyreek Hill I know it doesn't surprise anybody but this guy was a stone cold baller deep downfield last Last year. He was second in the NFL in receiving yards in this situation, and he scored eight freaking touchdowns on deep shots last year. That, of course, the most in the NFL. He was double teamed on 12.5% of his deep shot targets last year. Of wide receivers who saw at least 15 targets deep downfield, that was the third highest double team rate. And man, just think about this. The fact that teams knew that he was going to go deep and the fact that they doubled him at a high rate and yet he still burned them deep. Eight touchdowns, the most in the NFL. Teams knew this was coming and they could not stop it. All right, that's it for me. Those are your top five deep shot artists in 2020. If you want to see more next gen related content, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll get it for you. But for now, I got to be like Tyreek Hill. Deuces. Are you gonna get